Hey guys, welcome back to the next part. We're gonna continue with the little like wood pillars that we were doing and uh, yeah, let's just jump straight into it. So uh, this is where we left off. I actually imported the little lights here uh, to the light setup scene just to create a little bit of a better render, but nothing has changed. It's exactly the same thing. Let's actually hide this thing and turn this all of these things off. This plane we don't need it anymore. We're good to go. And um, yeah, so we have this group. We've already exported the group. We have this other group, which is the Hypolis. We've already exported that one as well. So now it's time to open Substance Painter. And it's gonna be a very simple uh, thing that we're gonna be doing here. Like there's there's no uh, like no like weird or, or difficult thing to do. It's just a matter of going here, recent, new. We're definitely gonna select a um, 24, 2K uh, resolution here. It doesn't really matter if we're using OpenGL or DirectX right now because when we export, things are going to be exported in the proper uh, elements. OpenGL is the one that works better with Substance. And then we're just going to jump into our wood pillars here. We're going to write our wood pillars, which is the one that has uh, no name because that's the one we're going to be using later on. No UDIMs, no nothing, just simple, very basic wood pillars here. And we have the first big problem. So what's the problem? We forgot to change something here in our low elements, which is the shading. Right now it's hard mode uh, shade. Uh, I believe in Blender you guys call it uh, a smooth shade, smooth shade, I think. Uh, here we call this uh, soft and a hardened edge. So I'm going to call soft and edge so that everything is soft. And now we just grab everything again, file, export selection and we export the wood pillars. Now, let's imagine that for some reason you did not see this and you started working. Uh, you can just go into edit, project configuration and reload the wood pillars uh, object and it should fix it for you. So yeah, uh, texture set settings, we're gonna go down here and we're gonna do our baking process. If you wanna know a little bit more about this process, we cover this in depth in our tutorials. So just check them out. The the, the basic tutorial, like I explained like which uh, what each of these maps do in like a more in detail uh, approach. So here I'm just gonna grab this wood pillars. Uh, Hi, but now the problem is which one it is, right? So let's say file, export selection. And we only have an FBX, so it has to be the FBX, but I'm not sure which one it is. I mean, it really shouldn't be that much. No, it, it will be a problem. So yeah, okay, we selected the FBX. It will be a problem because we are gonna be using a naming convention over here. So down here on the normal maps, I am gonna go to this option that sets a match and I'm gonna change this by mesh name. This will make sure that that flax that we added, the low and the high, they will only bake into each other. And the main reason I wanna do that is because if I were to not do this, uh, sometimes details from one object would be uh, like implanted into the other one. And I'm not too worried about the normal map because the normal map is really like far away. I'm worried about the ambient occlusion map. So here in the ambient occlusion, I'm gonna change you can see this one, self-occlusion, only same mesh name. And then I'm gonna hit a bake textures. So there we go. That That's the bakes, that's the ambient occlusion, that's the curvature, that's the uh, thickness, and that's it. Like we have all of our bakes ready to go. Now I do see them a little bit, as you can see, a little bit jaggedy. So I'm gonna go back to bake mesh maps. And one thing you can change if that looks a little bit too jaggedy, uh, go into the anti-aliasing and you can do this subsampling uh, by two by two, for instance. And yes, this will take a little bit longer, but the uh, bake will be a little bit softer. So you should see a, a nicer a nicer effect over here. And of course, if you increase this, it's gonna be a little bit more and more and more depending on the, on the detail, but I'm, I'm not too worried about, see that? That looks a lot nicer because of the of the subsampling. Now, this also has to do with the resolution that we have, where I know we're working with a 2K resolution, but I know that the player's never gonna go this close to the object, right? So more often than not, this is probably the closest you're gonna be at the object, and that looks fair, like good enough for, for what we're going for. So now it's a matter of texturing. So we have this wood rough, which I think is gonna work perfectly. So I'm gonna go into my layers, place this right here, and as you can see, the first thing I'm noticing is the direction of the of the veins, right? So I'm gonna rotate this around so that it matches, uh, it should be 90 degrees, and that should be a lot closer. Now you can see that this thing actually has height information. It's it's trying to place its own like sort of like fibers and stuff into the into the whole thing. If that's not something that you want, remember at any point you can just remove the height information and that's gonna remove the, the elements. And uh, yeah, so we should have something about like, like this. Now on the caps, of course, I know that this is now what we get. Like on a reference, do we still have the reference over here? Yeah, on the reference, you're either gonna get like a, like a white cap, like uh, this over there, or you're gonna get like a dark cap, right? Like something like this. I know this is a game, but this is this is kind of what we're used to seeing, right? Like the fresh wood or the dry wood on the on the top. So in this case, uh, one, one, one thing I'm seeing is this line right here. That's the that's the seam line. One way to reduce that is going here, changing this UV to triplanar projection. And now we shouldn't see it anymore. So that's looking even better, I would say. Uh, scale, uh, it's also gonna be important. 
So we definitely want like a probably like a like a little bit of a bigger scale. There we go. So like a two, I think it's gonna work uh, just fine. Um, now I'm gonna add a field layer, and in this field layer, I'm gonna pick the wood color. So I'm just gonna pick this guy right here and grab like the general wood color and make it a little bit lighter, a little bit more saturated, just a little bit like that. Well, actually, no, it should be like desaturated. Roughness, it's definitely gonna be super, super rough. So I'm gonna go here in the roughness, I'm gonna really push this out. And I'm gonna go into my black mask and I'm gonna paint using my brushes over here. Let's use like this, well, just like a harder, hardish brush like this. Yeah, let's start with this one right here. There we go. Because I wanna have like that sort of like chiff effect. We're gonna be blending that, don't worry. So we have that sort of like chip effect going on. And that's it. So same thing over here. It's like kind of like leaves, right? So there we go. Like this sort of like, again, chip effect. There we go. And there we go. Now to make this blend a little bit more or better, what I'm gonna do is I am gonna change the options here to a linear dodge. And I really like linear dodge because it, it punches the color, it brings it up, it's like multiplying the whites or the like light colors. And then of course I'm gonna bring this back out. So so that's not super, super intense, but you at least see a little bit of that like sort of damage, right? Now I'm gonna go a softer, uh, softer brush like this, uh, dirt spots, and I'm gonna blend a little bit of the, of the borders. So again, I'm using it to kind of like blend some of the elements because I, I, I do want some of that like harsh lines, kind of like, like chips in the wood, but not super harsh, right? So it's kind of like blending. It's all about the artistry, right? Here's where you you really go in here and, and bring the artist you have inside of you. Like this is where, this is where you leave aside all of the like automatic things that softwares tend to do and you really go there in and give it the detail, the history. I always talk about the history of the object, right? Like what, what, what kind of history are we are we getting from from this element right here? You can use your Wacom tablet, by the way. I'm using my mouse right now, uh, but you can use the Wacom tablet as well. It does have pressure sensitivity, so you can play around with that one. There we go. There we go. Perfect, so now as you can see, especially if you press the letter C, you're gonna be able to go in here and take a look at this. Now, we should, of course, take a look at the concept itself and, and see how the concept is looking. Because if the concept has some very dark uh, materials or dark uh, woods, we definitely need to take that into consideration. I think it does. So, yeah, as you can see here, the wood does seem to be a little bit darker than, than usual, right? So, so it's a little bit darker, so that means that I'm gonna go oh, to this one right here, color, and let's go a little bit redder and definitely darker. Something like that, there we go. Let's go back to M to go into the material mode. Probably not as saturated because it's supposed to be like a dry wood. Definitely a little bit darker, there we go. Does that look nice? And we can of course go here and that's one of the cool things about using uh, like a procedural layers. It, it should be fairly easy to, to change things around if, if things are not looking exactly like we want. So I think that looks pretty, pretty nice. Uh, let's add a dirt. Dirt is of course gonna be super important here. And one layer that I love using is the rust layer. So if you use a rust material, rust is really good because it, it, it has a lot of information on the color. And if we do this to like an overlay, you're gonna see it goes immediately dark. So that's that's kind of what we're going for. So we're gonna add a black mask and we're just gonna use a traditional dirt generator, dirt generator which is gonna keep our all of our elements a little bit more like dark, right? We're gonna have a little bit more darkness to them. So definitely, I'm gonna bring the grunge amount down because I, I really want like the crevices to have this sort of effect. And then of course, we're gonna bring the, the intensity lower because we do want to have a little bit of dirt, but we don't want to override all of the all of the elements that we have. So, so this is a little bit closer to the one I'm uh, expecting. Now, uh, this is an interesting concept because it's on a cliff that's really, really, really far away from the, from the sea. So I'm not sure if we would see like humidity or moss on the on the underside of these things, but I would expect to see like some darker spots here, like maybe, I don't know, like grease or things like that. So I'm gonna add a new layer here. It's gonna be a dark layer. So like a really dark desaturated layer. Uh, probably not as uh, shiny. So let's increase the roughness a little bit more. 
and then I'm going to add a black mask and I'm going to manually paint a little bit of details here. So I'm going to go back here and let's do like this, um, like this uh, dirt. So see that sort of like effects. And again, I want this to be like super, super subtle. Just a little bit on the on the on the lower edges of the of the thing. So I'm not sure what this would be like. Again, oil like fish oil or something that gets splattered there. Uh, this is just to get like a little bit of uh, visual interest, right? So that not everything looks exactly exactly the same. And very important that we do this manually. We don't want to use any generators right now. Then I'm gonna change this. Let's use this third spots. Add a little bit more and then fade it out as well. So have fun with this. This is one of my favorite parts in the in the texturing process because you can actually again have have like fun with this. Now I know, and again looking at the reference, like we get this sort of like gradients, right? Like or or there's like damage areas in certain parts of the of the wood. So I'm gonna do something like that, and I'm gonna show you one quick cute little trick here. So I'm gonna use just color. This is just gonna affect my color. And I'm going to use a black mask. And instead of using a generator, I'm actually going to use a fill layer. And I'm going to look for some like grunge noise. So let's do, like a grunge noise. And we have like this, that there's like this one, like this grunge brush is pretty nice, right? So it's kind of like paint. And what we can do here is we can play around with the balance to create like this sort of like effects. And then just find something that looks interesting. Like, uh, I don't know, uh, let's try like a uh, inverse divide. Then like bring this like really down. And that's gonna add just another layer of, of something, right? To the to the whole thing. It's just a couple of uh, el elements there. Let's do like an maybe overlay no soft light. No, I think we're gonna have to do like even normal, just keep it normal and, and lower the opacity. Just to have this sort of like a like white, you know, little like chips and elements there, like I don't know. I don't know how you want to call this or how you would uh, call this with it. Just just a little bit of an extra detail here. Now, you definitely do want, I'm going to add a paint layer here. And I'm going to erase that little bit of this one right here. Because it's a little bit too obvious. So it's going to be very obvious when you see it like several times on the same like logs. So just just delete this. And uh, that's pretty much it. Like as you can see, we have our uh, our locks ready to go. So now it's a matter of how do we bring this into into uh, Maya, for instance, and start preparing these things. And it's super simple. I'm just gonna go file, and we're gonna say uh, export textures. We're gonna export these textures, of course, to our project. So I normally like to export things in this case specifically in the in the like uh, folder of the object, because we're gonna be bringing this later on into into um, Unreal. We're definitely going to use this Unreal Engine 4 Pact, which is the element that we're using. Uh, Targa is fine, so we're going to go use Targa. It's the best uh, resolution or very good resolution. And we're just going to hit Export. And now you're going to see that we get this thing. This texture is called a Wood Pillars M, Wood Pillars underscore base color. Now that's super, super annoying because I don't want to have such a long name. I already, uh, as long as I had this M Wood Pillars base color, that's fine. So why is it adding this extra element right here? Well, because the Unreal Engine 4 packed uh, option actually adds this little flag, which is the, um, the uh, dollar sign mesh, which adds the name of the mesh, the whole thing. I do think that I created a new one for us in the next two, do we have it here? No, I think I uninstalled it. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna grab this one, I'm gonna duplicate it, and I'm gonna call this Unreal Engine, uh, and then let's rename it, Unreal Engine uh, Packed, but I'm gonna call this Next Toot. There we go. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove the mesh flag from the element. So we are gonna keep the texture set flag, which is the name of the material that we got in, inside of Maya, that's why it was important on the last video that we added a, a material called uh, wood pillars, but we're gonna remove the, the mesh name because we really don't need it, need it right now. And now if we go into settings, we're just gonna go here and select the Unreal Engine uh, for packed and next to it and export. And now when we open the directory, you're gonna see we have wood pillars, M wood pillars, B base color, M wood pillars, normal, M wood pillars, occlusion, roughness, method. So I know that this is, these are the materials for the element. And some people might even say like, hey, just get rid of the M, just keep the wood pillars base color. It's, it's, uh, that's already, or that, that's a uh, personal preference. So we're gonna jump into Maya here. Let's save the scene in case we ever need to return to it. And let's open our, um, our lighthouse scene, which is the main one over here. There we go. So now here, 
we're going to import not the scene, we're going to import the low polys. So we're going to go into our assets folder. We're going to say uh, lighthouse wood pillars, and we're going to import the wood pillars right here. Import. And we're going to have this little folder down here, which is, well, it's <laughs> beneath me. So uh, we have the little folder at the very bottom. Let me move it up. There we go. So with all of the four pillars. Now it's very important that we keep these four pillars here. And the reason is uh, I want to keep this group clean. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to duplicate this group. I'm going to call this a wood pills original and I'm going to hide it just in case I never need to like reference the original ones. And then I've just created a new group over here. And now this new group, these are the pillars that we're going to be moving. So we're going to select the pillars and there we go. That's the pillars right here. Now, before we start placing them, um, I'm just going to assign the material. Or actually, they already have this, the material. So I'm just going to connect the file here. And it's going to be, of course, in the assets folder. Um, Lighthouse, wood pillars. It's going to be the base color. There we go. So you can see the base color is already there. And uh, I'm going to assign the normal map just to see a little bit more. We're not going we're gonna, to uh, we're not going to have the roughness uh, because the Lambert is not prepared to receive the roughness, but we can have the bump. So we're going to have a file. This is going to be set up to tangent space normals. And on the file, we're going to input, of course, our normal map. So we go back here into the lighthouse, wood pillars, and we do the normal map. There we go. Now, the normal map, very important. We're going to change this to utility raw because the normal map is not a an image that needs color correction. And there we go. We should have the proper uh, element right here. And now the, the trick the, that I'm going to show you, it's super simple. I'm just going to grab this guy right here. And we're just going to start placing them where they're supposed to be. So the reason why we created two of them is so that we can uh, vary them, right? Now, some of you might be like, oh my God, do I really need to like position them and move them and, and place them exactly where they are supposed to be once again, like even though we already did it? And the answer is yes, like we could write the script. I'm not the best scripter, uh, but we could write the script where we select an object and then duplicate the object and then find the position of the object and then just like place it. I, I think, I mean, at this point, it's I find it a little bit easier just to <laughs> duplicate this guy and just move it along. So, like, let's duplicate it. Oh, actually, let's just do it twice. And then I'm going to grab this guy. Let's duplicate it from the main. One thing you can do, though, uh, that should make this thing a little bit easier is if you move the pivot point to the center there, to the, to the origin, remember D and V to move the pivot point, then it should be fairly easy to just, like, find the exact position of the like the center of the other uh, pillar right there. And again, it should be like a little bit easier, right? Or just like snap it to the, I'm not sure why it has like a big issue. There we go. There we go. And we just go and do this. There we go. Now to make a little bit of a variation, of course, we're gonna rotate them like this guy. Let's uh, of course center the pivot point as well. And let's just rotate it slightly. And now the cylinders that we had as placeholders are no longer needed. We can just like delete them and we have our little like bench right there. Now we can grab these guys again, just duplicate them, move them over here, which is where we had the other ones. And in here you can see that we can like just adjust them a little bit more and then grab all of them again, just control D. And players really don't notice when these things like are repeating. Sometimes if it's too obvious, yeah, they might notice. But in this case, uh, we should be completely, completely fine. Here, uh, I mean, I don't see this one, so I'm just going to delete them. And there we go. Now, you can see that this is definitely bringing our poly count up. So just by having these ones right here, we're already at 6,000 triangles. So this is going to be a little bit of a heavy scene. Uh, can we optimize this guys a little bit more? Yes, of course we can. Like, this can go a lot, lot lower. But I don't think we're going to have that much of an issue inside of... Uh, instead of uh, Unreal. Now, let me show you another trick because I, I don't want you guys to leave without seeing this very nice trick to make this a variation and positioning a little bit faster. So what I'm going to do is I already know that this guy is sitting right there, right? So I'm going to position this one where it's supposed to be. This is the block for a human. Let's move it. So I am going to like vary. Like let's say we're going to have one, two, and then the other one's gonna be right about there. And then the other one there, and there, and there, and there. And let's jump here. Well, let's just this guy twice here. There we 
go. And then here, one of the cool things about this is since we're inside of the group, it's gonna be very easy to organize our ad liner rather than having to like group and hide everything. We know that that's gonna be like the wood pillars group, right? So there we go. And then I'm gonna grab this guy right here, which is the, the small one. Uh, let's place the pivot right there. Snap it to the floor as well. And we're gonna fill in the gaps, right? So once you are used to doing this thing, this shouldn't be that uh, that difficult. This is where I think the gizmo inside of Maya is a little bit superior than the than the G uh, technique inside of Blender. Like I've been, uh, I've mentioned this before. I've been learning Blender the last couple of weeks. Every now and then I, I try my hand and I try to model the same things that I know how to model inside of Maya. I'll try to do them in, in, in Blender. And it's pretty much the same thing. I mean, the techniques and the principles apply to both of them, uh, but I still can't get my head around of like the, the G and then Y and then X. It's pretty handy for some things, but it's pretty un, unintuitive for others, at least for me that I've been using this uh, gizmo here inside of Maya for so long, right? So there we go. That's it. So now we've placed pretty much all of the little uh, guys right there. The only problem is, uh, well, first we have a lot of uh, cylinders. So let me, let's delete all of the cylinders here. There we go. So bye-bye cylinders. And uh, the problem is that when we duplicated them, we did, not, we did not rotate them, right? Like we were not like moving and rotating. So that's something that we definitely want to change. I also notice here that all of the two, all of these two lows are not exactly on the floor. So I'm just going to select them and move them down. There we go. So they're like intersecting with the, with the thing and they're not like floating around. Now, what I can do is I can actually grab all of these guys and there's one very cool thing inside of Maya called the bonus tools. I'm not sure if I've mentioned this before in, in some of our other videos, but you can actually download them. They're completely free. You just need to be using, of course, uh, um, the, the the good, like Autodesk uh, things. So Autodesk bonus tools, Maya. And you just log in with your username and they're available from 2018 to 2022. They're just plugins. They're just like extra plugins and add-ons that you can use to, to do some cool things. And one of the ones that I'm gonna use is these bonus tools modify and it's called let me save real quick <laughs> bonus tools modify and it's this called uh randomized transforms basic so very simple tool i'm just going to select in this case the y-axis of my objects and i want to rotate them in a random way from a zero to uh 360. <laughs> so that's pretty much it like it's going to give me a random rotation from zero to 100 uh, 360. so if i do random rotate all of them are gonna start like rotating around. You can see how they're like dancing over there. And that's gonna make sure that I have a completely randomized uh, effect to each one of them. And now you're not gonna see the exact same like uh, element uh, anywhere, right? So so yeah, I mean, that's it guys. That's pretty much it. You, We have all of the pillars done and then we're in a very good position. Now, as you can see, we're not finished with modeling yet and we're already texturing certain things. Is that good? Is that bad? That might be one of your questions. And there's no answer. Like there's no like right or wrong answer. Some people like to finish all of the modeling first and then do the texturing. Some people like to like go crazy and do a couple of things first and then the other things. I personally started, when I first started, I always finished my modeling first and then all of my UBs and then all of my texturings. But I found out that it's very tiresome because you get like so overwhelmed by that much modeling, that much UBs and then all of that texturing. So it seems like big chunks of tasks at the time, right? Uh, so lately I've been doing this process where if I find something that, hey, I can just like quickly like sculpt and texture this, then just go for it. Like just sculpt and texture it and that's it, you're done. That doesn't mean you're not gonna keep on modeling. Like no, no one's like binding your hands behind your back and saying, you need to finish modeling before you jump into texturing. No, just have fun. As long as the work is done, then you're gonna be just fine. So yeah, this is pretty much it guys. Uh, this is a game ready asset. It is a lot of uh, cylinders right now we have uh, 14,000 triangles. It's not the end of the day or the end of the world, but it's uh, it, it is a little bit heavy. So um, here's another quick tip. If at any point we feel like, hey, you know what? Maybe we can reduce this a little bit more. Yes, you can actually just grab all of these edges again. Like all of this, guys. Like one, two, three, four. And even though we've already did bakes and textures and everything, if you just control and delete, you are going to be able to reduce. This is the way we used to do LODs back in the day. Uh, it's not going to look pretty, though. I mean, it's going to look pretty damn like a square, like you can see here. But you're going to keep your textures. So that's why I don't care. Uh, well, I don't care. It sounds very bad. Like, that's why I'm, I'm not too worried about this thing because I know that eventually I can reduce this even further if I need to. Again, it's not going to look nice. It's not going to look cool, 
uh, but it can be done. So uh, more often than not in your studios, you're gonna find that people are gonna ask you to do like some really high quality assets. And then once the performance targets start coming up, that's when you're gonna have to, okay, let's optimize, let's down the textures, let's down the polycans, let's down the amount of bones or the animations. Like there's, there's ways to cut corners and, and get to a very nice result. Uh, this one I'm just gonna delete. We don't need it anymore. And yeah, so this is it, guys. Let me know what you think in the comments. Uh, I think we're in a really good position tomorrow. Do not miss tomorrow's video, guys, because tomorrow I'm gonna be blowing your minds with this guy right here. Like, how the hell are we gonna texture all of this wood? Are we gonna actually be doing like all of the um, all of the planks? And of course not. So I'm gonna be teaching you some cool uh, tips and techniques for for games, of course, that we're gonna be able to apply over there. So yeah, that's it, guys. Hang on tight, and I'll see you back on the next one. Bye bye. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and I'll see you back tomorrow. Bye bye.